Assalamu alaikum. You asked me to respond to a couple of questions about connectivism. I'm happy to do that. You have four questions, in fact, and only five minutes. You ask, has the theory of connectivism changed over the last couple of years? Not really. I think that the biggest thing has been to distinguish between the way George Siemens sees it and the way I see it. George Siemens sees a network as an extension of our capacities. So our thoughts, our ideas are projected out into the network, out into society. And of course, what happens there comes back into ourselves. Me, I see the human mind and society as two separate networks that interact with each other through a process of emergence where the network creates patterns and recognition where the other network recognizes or perceives those patterns. I think that's the main difference. You also ask, can you give us some of connectivism's pros and cons. Well, I mean, I don't really see it in terms of pros and cons um, because I see connectivism as an effort to understand learning and cognition. I don't think you would ask me, you know, what are the pros and cons of gravity or what are the pros and cons of the second law of thermodynamics? I view connectivism in that light. It's not just something you pull off the shelf and use when you need to use it. I, I think of it more as a way of looking at the world and seeing how the world is structured, seeing how cognition works and how thought works. You ask, why parents and teachers are afraid of it. And that's an interesting question because I can't say I've perceived that people are afraid of it, but I, I can understand that. And one of the things with connectivism, one of the things with networks in general is that there's nobody in control. Networks are self-organized. We see this everywhere we see a network. If you look at a flock of birds flying in the sky, you see the patterns and the shapes that the flock of birds might, you know, exhibit. <clears throat> you see the direction that the flock of birds flies in, but there's no head bird telling where all the other birds should fly. It's the flock through the process of interaction doing this on its own. We see the same thing with a school of fish. We see the same thing with a herd of animals. There's nobody in charge of all of the animals when the animals are out there on their own. They decide as a group, but not through some sort of decision-making process. It's just each animal doing its own thing. So there's a lack of control there. There's a lack of an, um, an order imposed by a parent or by a teacher to make sure that the individuals do the right thing. I think with connectivism, you have to trust that the individuals will do the right thing. And I think with connectivism, we need to understand how these networks are structured and set up in order not to enhance the power of any individual, but to actually limit that power so that they can, you know, convince the flock to walk off a cliff or something like that. What is the future of connectivism? Well, it's an empirical theory. The elements of it are empirical. For example, I say that the properties of a successful network, the kind of network that won't walk off a cliff, are the properties of autonomy, diversity, interactivity, and openness. Now, these aren't just things I've picked out of the air. 
Um, in fact, I've obtained them from various sources in literature and in some of the talks that I've listened to. And these are the things that I've seen that successful networks have in common. But it's a theory, right? It's a theory that might be false. And that's okay with me. And what makes it true or false is when we look at networks operating in the world and look at whether they're successful or whether they're failures and see whether they have these properties. Or by contrast, take one of these properties away from a network, take autonomy maybe away from a network, or take openness away and see if the network can still function. And by these empirical tests, we can narrow in on what the properties are of a successful network, what the properties are of a network that will sustain itself over time. So that's what the future is. The future is making the theory more clear, testing the theory against our own experience, observation, science, and trying to make it more precise and make it more accurate for the future. Anyhow, that's my five minutes. Thank you for your time and uh, greetings from all of us in Canada to all of you in Saudi Arabia. It's been a pleasure talking to you.